Recipes from the restaurant P.F. Chang's have become one of my most popular recipe requests. So in this video today, I'm going to be teaching you how to recreate P.F. Chang's sweet and sour chicken. Welcome to Restaurant Recipe Recreations, everybody. A channel that serves up your favorite restaurant recipes right in your very own kitchen. And today's video also happens to be a viewer request from Jean a very special viewer of mine. So Jean, I hope you enjoyed the video, and of course I hope you enjoy the recipe. And if you happen to have a restaurant or a recipe that you would like me to feature in an upcoming episode, then go ahead and drop it in the comments section below. I promise I'll take a look at it. But make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that when your video comes up, you'll be notified. A brief description of what the sweet and sour chicken is at P.F. Chang's, if you've never had it or never heard of it, is lightly battered and wok fried chicken breast. It's stir fried together with red pepper, green pepper, white onion, and fresh pineapple. It's then all tossed together in a slightly sweet, slightly sour glaze made with rice wine vinegar, soy sauce, ginger, and garlic. So in addition to everything that you see here, what else you'll need for this recipe are two egg whites, some ketchup. Yes, I said it, ketchup. I don't wanna hear it. <laughs> You'd be surprised at how many people are offended by the fact that there's ketchup in some of my Asian recipes. But the fact of the matter is, is that at least with Asian American cooking, they use quite a lot of ketchup in some of their dishes. And so there you have it. You're also going to need cornstarch and sugar and some canola oil for the wok fry. Now you can see here, obviously I have an entire whole pineapple. While you're not going to be using the entire pineapple in this dish, I do recommend using only fresh pineapple. You can use canned pineapple if you have to, um, or if you want to, uh, rather than buy an entire pineapple, but I highly recommend using fresh pineapple. For me, canned pineapple is a little wonky. Um, I always feel like it's got a little bit of a, a tinny aftertaste, and for sure the texture is different. They do use fresh pineapple at P.F. Chang's, and that's what I recommend using. All right, my friends, let's get into making P.F. Chang's sweet and sour chicken. All right, darlings, as always, first things first, when it comes to cooking, we need to prep out our ingredients. And I'm going to start by preparing the pineapple. You can see how the base of the pineapple is kind of a nice golden color. That is a great indicator that your pineapple is ripe. Also, if you smell the bottom of the pineapple, just kind of give it a little sniff test. If it smells really pineapple-y, that means your pineapple is ripe as well. So I don't know if pineapple-y is a term, but uh, I just coined it, so there you go. All right, I'm gonna start by taking off the top of the pineapple. Let's cut off the base of the pineapple. You can see how beautiful and bright and yellow this pineapple is. Um, this is going to be a very sweet, very delicious pineapple. You're going to go ahead and cut off the outer layer of the pineapple. Go ahead and just shave off all of the pieces of the outer layer that you may have missed, particularly at the base here. Now take each half and cut that in half as well. So you want four quarters of pineapple. Take one of your quarters, stand it up on end, and carefully take out that center rib or the core of the pineapple. That's the tough fibrous part of the pineapple. It's not good for eating, it's not good for cooking, so discard that. Now that your pineapple is completely cleaned, you're going to cut the pineapple into one quarter inch pieces. And for this recipe, you're going to need one cup of pineapple pieces. Next, let's go ahead and prep out the green pepper, the red pepper, and the white onion. You're gonna need one cup of each as well. This happens to be kind of a larger pepper, so I've only got one here, whereas my red peppers are a little on the smaller, so I went ahead and grabbed two of those. So for the peppers and the onion, you're actually going to cut them into a one-inch dice. And cut the red pepper into a one-inch dice as well. And finally, one cup of white onion cut into a one inch dice. And now that the fruit and vegetables are done for the stir fry, let's move on to the chicken. I have here four five ounce chicken breasts that have been trimmed. And we're going to cut this chicken breast again into one inch chunks. Now that your chicken is prepped out, place this in the refrigerator until we're ready to come back and work with the chicken. Okay, next we're going to get the sweet and sour glaze working so that it's got time to reduce. 
uh, so that we can go ahead and add it into the stir fry at the very end. On a medium heat, get yourself a small saucepan. When the pan comes up to temp, add two tablespoons of canola oil. Make sure that the oil coats the bottom of the pan and add one tablespoon of minced ginger. I'm sorry, I said ginger, I meant garlic. That was garlic, obviously. Now you're going to add one tablespoon of minced ginger. Go ahead and stir that around until it becomes fragrant, but do not let the ginger or the garlic burn. Next, add eight tablespoons of water. And that will also slow down the cooking process as well. Once that begins to simmer, add one tablespoon of white sugar, one tablespoon of rice vinegar, one tablespoon of soy sauce, and here it comes, four tablespoons of ketchup. You'll want to frequently stir this, scraping from the bottom, uh, to ensure that the sugar is dissolved, but that it doesn't burn, and also that the bottom of the glaze does not scorch. All right, you can see how this glaze has thickened significantly and has reduced by at least half. Once you see that, you know that the glaze is ready. You'll want to remove it from the heat and we'll set this aside for now. Now that almost everything else is done, we're gonna dredge the chicken. Get your chicken out of the refrigerator, pour the egg whites over the chicken, and using your hands or a spoon, just make sure that all of the chicken is coated with the egg white. I'm gonna show you a super simple and handy way to dredge your chicken. Get a large Ziploc gallon bag, Remove the chicken from the egg white, kind of knocking off any of the excess. Throw it into the bag. Make sure that your hands are nice and clean. And to the chicken bag, add one fourth of a cup of all-purpose flour. Then you wanna add a half of a cup of cornstarch. This is a one fourth measurement, so I'm going to add two. And one pinch of salt. Don't go crazy with the salt because of course the glaze uh, has a salty element to it as well. Once your wok or your saute pan becomes very, very hot, you're going to add one tablespoon of canola oil. And now to your very hot wok and your very hot oil, working in small batches, add your coated chicken. When you remove your chicken from the bag, just try to knock off any of the excess coating. But the key here is to work in small batches so that you don't overcrowd the wok or the pan. You do want this chicken to be crispy. Each small batch of chicken should take you about four minutes to cook, uh, but certainly if you're curious as to whether or not your chicken is cooked all the way through, feel free to just remove one of the larger pieces, cut into it, make sure that there's no pink on the inside. When you're sure that your chicken is cooked through, then remove it, set it off to drain, and then continue working with the rest of the chicken in small batches. And if your wok is running dry like mine is, add one more tablespoon of canola oil to finish up the rest of your chicken. When your chicken is thoroughly cooked, remove the last batch and of course set aside to drain. And now we're gonna saute the peppers and the onions and you wanna leave whatever little bit of oil is left from the chicken. If your wok is dry and your chicken has absorbed all the oil, just add another half of a tablespoon of canola oil. So now all at once, add your peppers, one cup of red pepper, one cup of green pepper, and one cup of white onion. And then just mix that around in the wok. Do not let your peppers and your onions overcook. You're looking for crispy and crunchy. And when your peppers turn a nice bright color, add back in your chicken. Add your one cup of fresh pineapple. And then add your glaze to the stir fry. As with all stir fries, you wanna eat this right away while the crispy chicken and the vegetables are still crispy. What do you think, Jean? We finally did it, girlfriend. I promised you that I would. Moment of truth. A little pineapple. Oh yeah. I'm looking at you, Jean. And until I see you all again, everybody, make it an awesome, awesome day. 
Cheers, I love y'all. And for more amazing recipes from P.F. Chang's, check out right here.